Um, yeah, we don't have to really rush here, as hopefully more people are going to join. Um, may I ask everybody that is here, whoever can answer, um, how are you guys keeping it sustainable during the COVID? Yeah, so it's being recorded, so just bear that in mind. Yes, yeah, so welcome everyone. Axe and the Student Ambassadors present our hashtag sustainability challenge. And the fact that you're here means that you have accepted this challenge. And to those who couldn't make it and still supported, we appreciate your effort as well. So this challenge was created because of what we know as Earth Day. Right, and Earth Day is celebrated on the 22nd of April every year, and it has been, it was started in 1970, and it is done, you know, to promote sustainability, to create awareness of the issues, well, the environmental issues rather that are happening, and how we can mitigate or reduce the negative effects that the Earth is facing. So for today. Before we you know, talk about who our winners are and what the submissions were, we'll share with everyone briefly how, you know, what Earth Day is about really and some problems that we're facing. So remember in terms, it, is, it should be your belief, my belief, everyone's belief that every single person can make a change because this can create a spiral effect to save our world. So if we put our hands and hearts together, as you see on the screen, there are different persons from all over the world. But if we come together, we can actually promote a happy and healthy earth. So just to highlight that, you know, some of the problems that are being faced is pollution. You know, you have land, air, water pollution, and you also have deforestation where trees are being cut down for commercial use, among other things. And this in turn affects the extinction of animals and it can also result in habitat loss. So it's, I know it's, it's sad, but the good thing is that if we come together, we can actually combat against these problems. And another effect is desertification, where the, there are some areas it's extremely hot to the point where the earth cracks, as you see in that picture on the, in the top right there. So the problems are real and it's affecting everyone everywhere. So, you know, we have to be aware and then find ways how we can combat against this, as um, I said before. And there's also this concept of going green, right? When you think of sustainability, you'll often hear this, this term. And this term is because of the idea or the concept of global warming, where it is said that the earth, the temperature of the earth is increasing. And this is as a result of gases that are pollutants that gets trapped in the earth's atmosphere instead of escaping and so this rise in temperature is causing um, changes in our climatic conditions you know we know that the earth it can it can replenish itself however in in cases where it gets too extreme then you will see those negative effects it's just like the body if you if your body is infected with bacteria you know, one sign is that you'll see, you'll, you'll have mucus accumulate at the back of your throat. But if it becomes overwhelming, it can actually break down the body. Similarly, if the earth continues to be treated as if it has no value, if it has no worth, then the effects can be detrimental. So hence our challenge, and, and I say thank you again for accepting this challenge. We want to also highlight that there's a problem as it relates to plastic. As you can see here, eight out of 10 plastic water bottles become landfill waste. Can you imagine? And if we look at the, the last point there, it says in if everyone in NYC, that's New York City, gave up water bottles for a week, 
they would save 24 million bottles from being accumulated in landfills. And we know plastic takes a while to break down. And we have heard it everywhere. We have seen it. So we just want to continue to you know, reduce the use of plastic so that we, we reduce land pollution and other rippling negative effects that the use of plastic can cause. And this is a picture <laughs> that represents the amount of plastic bottles thrown away every five minutes. Do you want to try and guess how many bottles are there? Let's put it in the chat. How many do you think is there? Maybe I know. Let's see if the person who can guess it can get a prize. Can you check the chat for me, Pedro? <laughs> what is in the chat? I just, I just want to make sure, um, just want to say that when I saw this picture, yes. it was only a TV not functioning. <laughs> <laughs> it actually, if you look closely, it does like water bottles. Yeah, it's, it's because of the Zoom. Because I'm sharing, I can't see the chat. How many, what was the guess for how many bottles are there? So we got um, 10 million, 10, 10 million, million from, from Kevin. Oh. Hmm. 200 million. Yeah, that's a lot. Well, nice guess. Nice, such, nice um, thanks for trying. Well, I don't know either. I don't know. I really don't know, but it's a lot. So let us try to, you know, cut it down, cut down that number and you know promote a healthy earth so pedro i will now hand over to you and he will expound more on what going green means sure thank you tracy um so as we see there's a lot of garbage and waste going to our mother earth and it's the place we live so we should take good care of it um going green means that communities are starting to think twice before throwing their garbage away. So any action that is friendly and natural to the environment, that is sustainable, that's going to contribute to maintain the natural ecological balance. So we can give Earth a couple of more years ahead. Um, if Tracy skip to the ne next slide, we have that, um, that regular image that reduce, reuse and recycle. I believe here in Canada, there's a lot of um, promotion for for people to start reducing their wastage. Um, even I figured out, I went to the supermarket last week and I noticed if I buy a bottle of milk, I have to leave a deposit. So I have, um, so I come back and return the bottle to them. It's a way of recycling, which I found was pretty cool. It gives, uh, makes people um, obey their responsibility to the world so we can maintain it clean. Uh, if you move to the next slide, um, reuse the items. Um, I was reading this um, this slide and the holder for from a cereal box, you put magazines. There, Those things there have so much usage. I've seen some videos on YouTube where people keep their garbage inside um, peanut butter cups or other plastic containers where it's just gonna go, just gonna be thrown away. So then you can actually make something out of them. Maybe put your food inside or keep it for um, for something in the future. It is like uh, one of the reuse examples I can give. So um, one of the best way for going green is also recycling. Um, recycling, to be honest, it can provide jobs nowadays. Um, as if you guys are householders, um, you can you you put your garbage outside. There are people coming pick it up. We have to leave those garbage that that you can reuse it clean, so it is up their process. They don't have to clean it when it gets to the deposit. Um, and recycling um, will pay. 101 more in salaries and wages produces 275 more in goods and services and generate 135 more in sales. So somehow recycling can actually benefit the economy as well. And how can we go much greener? 
um, for example, if you start cutting energy, enjoy the summer light where the sunset is at 10 p.m. and don't use energy the entire day, just use it the natural energy. Uh, that's a huge help. Uh, reduce your um, reduce your use, replace your light bulbs with compact fluorescent bulbs and turn off when you not need them, electronics or anything. Um, well, you can also install a home alternative energy system. I, in my point of view, I don't think we have that technology yet, uh, not in every household, but it's a possibility in the next 10, 15 years that everybody can invest in some solar electrician system on their roof and start using uh, renewable uh, energy. And um, most energies are consumed uh, with heating and cooling. So I believe right now, it, try and go out, try and go for a walk. There are some good breezes during summertime and yep, try and keep safe and cool. How to green your water. So um, there are some problems sometimes with sinks. If you can always fix it or repair it, avoid drips. You can also, you can save a lot of water and uh, cultivate good water habits, such as turning off water while brushing your teeth or when you are washing dishes, it's also a possibility. Uh, going to the next slide, we're gonna be talking about um, reusing the water from the rain and also reuse gray water, which is any waste of water that you can actually use it to water your plants, for example. Um, keep your eyes open, report broken pipes, open hydrants, so we avoid the, the excessive waste of water. And take sh taking showers instead of baths, uh, control the time and focus on, on um, reducing the energy. And again, um, we should be taking good care of our, our planet. Uh, this is the only one we have by now. Yes, definitely. If any, if, if we hurt Mother Earth, where are we gonna go? You know, where are we gonna go? So thank you, Pedro, for talking about um, going green. And we saw it necessary to highlight going green because for this year, the theme for Earth Day, which, you know, which was last week, the theme is centered around restoring earth and it focuses on natural processes and emerging green technologies that can help to restore the world's ecosystem. So as mentioned before, you're all here because you accepted the sustainability challenge. And now we will just share the submissions that we got. So I would just like to share um, a yes. message from Pomponia here. Yes, she, she's using uh, LED uh, lights and has been there for five years and she wow. kind of changed. That's really cool. Yeah, Pedro, we also have um, like a, a water collection system. It collects rainwater from the roof and then it goes into a big bin and that is used to flush like the toilets. So, oh. you know, it really, it like it reduces even our water bill noticeably. So, you know, all these things help. Any, any chance you know the name of the system that you applied? Um, it's from, I should ask my husband, it's from, a, um, we had to install it like ourselves. And you know what? You can actually get from the city of Vancouver, you can get free, free rain barrels free. that's nice yeah so yeah. they're actually free a lot of people don't know that you can put them on your balconies you know it collects water uh and then you can use that water like you say to water plants to do you know to do other things so um yeah the system we got was from a company in abbotsford i call it the submarine looks like mm -hmm. a giant submarine that you bury underground <laughs> oh yeah it's nice how you say it. it has to come from the people the people has to think sustainable mm -hmm. not every household 
um, have this type of system. And the city of Vancouver actually helps out in case you want one. So I think from the country of Canada, that's really interesting, stepping in and, say, and providing to the people, look, if you want to be sustainable, we can actually help you out and do something. That's... Thanks. Oh, Tracy, can I can I add something? I don't want to interfere with your presentation. Sure. Is that sure. <laughs> okay? One of one of my concerns also, and I've actually done student present uh, presentations for students about this in the past, is elect um, electromagnetic radiation. So the radiation that we get from our cell phones, and uh, one of the pollution, the pollutants that we're seeing on our planet now is, um, you know, the crazy amounts of uh, wireless, right? And yeah. all these wire, you know, it's, it's just because we can't see it doesn't mean that it's not there. And so I, I just want everybody to, to, to really be aware of the impact of this. And it does have, um, uh, a very direct impact. So people that have their cell phones like this, sort of really close to their ear, um, there's been shown uh, that there's an increase of um, brain cancer in the area. So people will have these developed brain cancers and they, um, and if you look in the fine print of your cell phones, they say, you should not keep these so close. You're actually supposed to keep them away from your ear or use headsets. So, you know, again, it's something that a lot of people don't realize. You know, um, I know from students, some people actually sleep on top of their cell phones. Like they put their cell phone under their pillow. <laughs> Kevin is laughing, but it's true. And, yeah. you know, again, really bad for your health. And as you know, from health and safety, it's not going to kill you right today, but over time, it will really erode your immune system. So another, another pollutant, uh, and of course, you know, we don't have that control. We only have control over our own environment. So, you know, keep these at arm's length. Um, stay away from your, you know, your routers, they should be away from you because there's huge electromagnetic fields from routers and where you can actually use a wired connection, an ethernet connection. So anyway, I just wanted to add that because it, I know it's something because people can't see it. If we could see it, we would be shocked because all of a sudden our, you know, our airways would be filled with noise, right? All these waves. So anyway, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I just wanted to <laughs> add that as one of my environmental concerns. <laughs> and so we can open for questions maybe, or maybe a little discussion about that. Yes, um, yes, um, Poponia, thank you for sharing, because that area seems as if it would be good to research on and to promote awareness of that because to be honest, I sleep with my phone under my pillow sometimes. Oh I saw Kevin laughing. Maybe he does it too. But oh, do no, not do that. Keep it at arm's length. Yeah, but um it's really good that you brought that up. Yeah. Um, all right, thank you. As Tracy said I don't think people are aware of that. No. I believe um, maybe a few years from now, 10, 15, uh, there's going to have a huge consequence. Yeah. And there already is. You know, they've looked at, you know, this huge incidence in brain cancer since cell phones have come out. But of course, the cell phone companies say, oh, nothing to worry about unless you look at the very fine print because they don't want to alarm people. But you know, I just think, yes, they're very useful devices, but we have to, like everything, you know, just be prudent, be careful the way we use it. And the analogy I give is that before we understood what x-rays were, x-rays were actually used in department stores to measure your feet. 
you'd go in to, you know, measure your feet for shoes. You put your shoes on, you sit in an x-ray machine and it would see, okay, does, does this shoe fit properly? You know, we think about that today and we think like, whoa, that is just crazy, right? But again, when you know better, you, you do better. And back then people didn't realize the impact of that kind of radiation. And, you know, cellular radiation, very, very high frequency in the gigabytes, so gigabyte radiation, that means huge numbers of, and, and remember all the signals in our body also use electrical conduct, conduction, right, to send signals. Um, so it, it definitely does have an impact. So I just want everybody just to, just to be aware of this. Componia, do you think there's an action from those companies making cell phones to reduce the radiation coming from their products? The only, um, uh, it's a very good question. Um, there are, one of the things with electromagnetic radiation is, is that it's not attenuated, it's not stopped by anything. That's why, you know, you can use your, con your, your cell phone down in a concrete bunker, right? That signal is still getting through those layers of concrete, right? So there are only very few metals that can attenuate it and they have to be magnetically treated metals. The only people that I know that are concerned about this or, or actually have products around this are, is Japan. So in Japan, for example, you can buy baseball caps that have got this kind of special metal coating on the inside of your baseball cap. Um, So you think people are going to be purchasing those caps in order to keep uh, their brain to safe? Re to reduce that, yeah, that hitting your, because, right, we've got billions of neurons here processing um, signals. And again, it's like, you know, any of these, any of these environmental stressors, they all affect us differently. Like some people have tremendous levels of allergies. Other people say, oh, what's the big deal? It doesn't bother me as if it doesn't bother anybody. So I think it's, that's really important to remember that, you know, everybody's immune systems, you know, handle these kinds of effects differently. So we do know for sure that say for children that are exposed to high levels of electromagnetic radiation, say they live near cell towers or Uh, high um, frequency, um, um, you know, cables, that they will have an higher incident of, say, childhood leukemia. So there are studies that, you know, research that, you know, shows this. But, um, you know, it's just another one of those things that companies, they just don't want to deal with it. Uh, for example, in Alberta, when they transfer electricity, you know, uh, power lines, they actually cross the lines to reduce, remember uh, um, a, a, a power uh, wave is actually like a sine wave. So it sort of goes up like this. So because it's a wave, if you, if you cross the cables, you can actually cancel this wave out. So it becomes a very, has a much smaller effect. They actually do it in some provinces. British Columbia doesn't recognize it, doesn't do it. So, you know, I think it, it takes awareness for people to put pressure on um, governments, right? On, um, you know, uh, environmental um, uh, like groups and so on to pay attention to these things. Because, you know, we're talking about, I'm talking about my, my grandchildren, you're going to be talking about, you know, this affecting your children. So, um, you know, I, I just think it's something that we need to be aware of. And just like everything else, it, like Tracy Ann says, you know, it starts with people saying, no, I'm not going to smoke. No, I'm not going to use, you know, these plastic water bottles. Like, it's a personal decision.
That's right. Oh. Wow. We're getting some powerful words here from Pomponia. Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> All right. Um, wow. What, what, what more can we say? Well, <laughs> what I can do now is to share the submissions that we got um, from persons just to show how the Axanda community is promoting um, environmental sustainability. And, you know, we... If we all remember the great Canadian shoreline cleanup and Accenda has been actively involved in that. We were there in, in um, 2019. I was a part of it in 2020. And it's just it was just amazing. So we want to highlight our first submission. And that's Nagore Sadhu who accepted the sustainability challenge, you know, he's showcasing how he is helping to promote environmental sustainability during the pandemic. So, Nagor, let's hear from you. So just give him a thumbs up. You know, he was the first student to submit. So, Nagor, you can share, you know, in a briefly, you know, how, what, what is happening in this photo or this video? Actually, uh, this is the unnecessary part of what I submit. This is actually a plant uh, that I wanted to share, but there's a lot more. Uh, I'll share my screen. And Definitely. Definitely. Uh, so, there is a, there's a first picture. Uh, we were just talking about the trash, the plastic bottles. Uh, this is the concept that is something called vertical garden or green wall. And uh, the plants are planted not in the garden, but on the walls. Uh, during the pandemic uh, in India, we had a really long lockdown for around 10 months. We were just free, schools were closed, and everything was shut down. Uh, I came up with a plan and saw something similar like this on YouTube. So I wanted to give it a shot. I had some bottles uh, in my home and uh, some I asked my neighbors to help. And eventually I it turned out to this. And I'll tell you this entire structure other than plants cost me around 100 rupees. So if I talk about dollars, Canadian dollars, it's around 1.5 dollars. And, and this is a picture from long ago. Now the plants are well established, look more green, and it really oh, wow. attracts uh, whenever my friends or our relatives or someone from the street visit the house, they, they really praise it, and I really feel amazing. And really? there's another one. <laughs> it's a uh, uh, X uh, you sure see in the one picture and in the other. It's just uh, the chicks have hatched just a few days ago. I also wanted to share that. Uh, uh, do you guys uh, also say bulbul in Canada? Uh, repeat. Oh, just a side note. Nagor is currently in India. He's not in, in Canada now, so, but he's a student here at Accenda. Just a side note. What is the word that you're asking for um, about? Bulbul. Uh, this bird is called Bulbul. Uh, it's bulbul. kind of a nightingale. Nightingale. It's a really uh, good uh, bird. And the, uh, due to this nest, there's a lot of chirping in my garden, in my house, and it's really amazing when the amazing. birds came and feed them and they again went away, they come back. It's really uh, nice. Wow. Uh, it's uh, uh, in the left side, you see the port and I have made them myself. This is a concrete port. This is an indoor port. Uh, I made them in a uh, yogurt bottle, yogurt can. I put on some concrete and then I inserted a perfume bottle between 
and it ends up with structure like this. I painted uh, it afterwards and with the whitener, the whitener that we used in papers, I spotted them out and planted some plants. And in the right hand side, you'll see uh, it's a cup, a yogurt cup, uh, where my seedlings are sprouting. Uh, I also try to grow some veggies. I don't have a real garden in my home, but I do try to grow something in the porch. Uh, starting from left, it's a mint. It really smells very good. In the middle, it's capsicum. And it's, uh, what we call this, uh, brinjal, right? It's brinjal, right? And I also do have chilies, but I harvested them a few days ago. And in the last, I wanted to share something, a little bit of everything. This is our outer left side, our outer stairs. They look like this. I have really loads of plants. And in the middle, in the upper stage, uh, the middle gray port that you see in this port, uh, uh, there is a desk. And uh, near to it, I have hanged a plate. If you will notice, uh, I have put some on uh, grains and water for the birds that come there. And uh, the interesting fact is that the birds do not eat from this plate. They go to the garden uh, in the street. They go there and catch flies. They eat that flies and bugs. They do not eat from the plate. Uh, so this shows how the vegetation or gardens or plants are important for the survival of this species. Uh, this uh, species, uh, it was kind of extinct uh, some uh, years back, but it's really growing these days. And this plant, Portulaca, uh, this is a really amazing plant. Uh, I, uh, this plant is a seasonal plant. It grows in uh, usually in summers. And once you planted this plant, you need not to replant it the whole life. I tell you uh, how after the summer ends, this plant dies completely and uh, it also produces seeds that uh, sprouted, uh, that get scattered within the pot and in the next summer, it itself grows again. Uh, it comes in variety of colors, pink, red, yellow, white. I have all of them, but this one was blooming great, so I thought I could share this one. And on the right corner, we see a turtle. <laughs> uh, and uh, this plant in it, it's called silver plant. This is actually a uh, look more whitish in real. This plant has a cotton coating on it. And if uh, in the moonlight during the nights, this plant really glows. It reflects the light in the night. And uh, I thought I could share on those. I have also four colors of rose white, pink, uh, yellow, and red. That's the little bit of overview of what I have in my house. Wow, does anyone want to? Oh, thank you, Nagar. Does anyone want to comment on Nagar's submission? I am speechless. <laughs> thank you. Thank yeah, Nagar. Thank oh, you. So thank much. you. I, I just want to understand, Nagar, now, did you actually, with the yogurt containers, what do you use the yogurt containers for? Because like I have so many and then I save them all. Um, and then, you know, I use them to, I use them to just store food instead of buying more plastic containers. But did you make something with the yogurt container or you're using uh it for your seedlings? Uh, yes, uh, I uh, I did two things with the yogurt containers. One you see in the left hand side, I have grown some. Uh, this is the holy fork. It's a flowering plant. I had actually uh, 36 uh, cups. Oh, wow. Like this uh, that are uh, growing. And in the left hand side that you see the pots that I also made in the yogurt cups. I put the concrete, mix it with water and in between, I put the perfume bottle and it ends up with structure like this. I just uh, put Okay, I've got to figure out how to do that. 
So you uh, put concrete? Yeah, like uh, first cement? you take an empty container, yes. uh, whatever you have, like yogurt container. Uh, if it has an open mouth, then it's uh, good. If it does not cut it too half, pour some concrete mixed with water. In between, uh, uh, put something uh, like a bottle or like the most fits perfume bottle or mosquito spray bottles. Like we have spray bottles, put it in it, leave it for one day, keep uh, pull out the inner spray bottle first and later just uh, the yogurt bottles are usually the plastic, right? You can cut it with blade and you will see the structure like this, something like this made of, uh, it will look look different from this, but when you color it or do something uh, with it, uh, it will definitely look nice. I love that. That's my summer project. Thank you. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, Nagor. So thank you so much for sharing. We swear you've provided a happy hat for some little birdies. You're planting stuff and it helps. You know, plants help to oxygenate the, the air. And we are just, you know, in awe of what you are doing. So continue the good work. And uh, we will reach out to you regarding your prize for submitting first and, you know, continue with the good work. I'm going to share the next two submissions. So I'll go ahead and, and share my screen now, Nagor. Thank you so much. All right. So we have the rest of them. So let's see. After Nagor, we got our second submission from the ASM Student Society. So we can go ahead and give them a thumbs up, you know, thanking them. I think Estefania is here. And, you know, can you just expound on your submission? Yes. Um, well, this is our photo. It was like last moment we, we, we wanted to participate. Uh, we also do our best to recycle and to pollute, pollute the less that we can. So by using reusable, I know it's COVID and maybe plastic, ba plastic bags are increasing right now. When Vancouver already said that it's, well, Canada said that it's gonna be banned, but they had to postpone that because of this uh, virus. However, I prefer to go to local uh, businesses which are smaller and they let us to pack our things. So yeah, um, that's how we recycle. And I think this is a great challenge that you create here. Thank you, thank you so much. And you touched on a very important point that it's during the pandemic, right? The situation of the pandemic where the ban is on hold, but at the same time, we still can, you know, with these little efforts, we still can help with the reduction of the use of plastic. So, you know, carry your shopping bag, you know, reuse it. And that is definitely a very important point that you raise. Does anyone have any comment about their reusable bag? Does anyone take a, a shopping bag to the to the market when they go? You know, you just raise your, you know, indicate, raise your hand in the chat. So yeah, I have two bags from um superstore. So that's a very, very good thing. All right. Thank you, Estefan. Yeah. And now we have a third submission. And this was this is from Pedro and it's entitled Natural Light. So can you explain a bit more for us, Pedro? Of course. Thanks, yes. Grace. So uh, that's like the hallway of my house. And anytime that is sunny outside, Vancouver is looking bright. I try and open all the curtains, uh, all the doors, do not use energy at all. Just let the sun come in, uh, breeze in. And it actually changes the environment of your house as well. It gives you a little extra energy um, to, to do whatever you have to do in that day. And this comes from, I mean, it's good to everybody, but my mom always taught me to never stay in the dark, always let the sun come in and gives you, a, you know, like um, a new beginning type of thing. So I always, I always take that with me. Wow, thank, 
Wow, thank you so much, Pedro. And it's it's a very important point that you raise as well. So instead of keeping your lights on, you know, you can use the utilize the natural natural light, you know, or the sunlight. And so you can help with reducing energy consumption by turning the lights off. And as you said, even though we're focusing on our external environment, it also has an impact on your in, on the internal environment. You as a human, the natural light, you know, it, it, the sunshine, it has this therapeutic effect, just like with the plants, Nagor gardening, it has a therapeutic effect. And I know we're in a, we're in a pandemic, so these things help. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So you will be contacted about your prize, Pedro and Estefania. So we got some other submissions. Um, we got from one of our faculty members, Kevin. I saw a submission from him. Uh, I saw him in the room just now. Is he here? I think he's trying to get back online, but I'll just share a fifth submission. When I brought up this um, sustainability project, my coworker at the front, Leah, she um, was saying, there's a lot of things Accenda does to promote sustainability. And she mentioned that, you know, Accenda, we have an e-receipt system because at the front, we process a lot of payments and usually we would print, print the receipt. So now, as you can see on the left-hand side, top left-hand side, we, students have access to an e-receipt in their Moodle. And uh, this helps with, you know, reducing the amount of paper because we know paper, we know that trees are, are used to using the production of paper. And as you can see, there's a picture of some trees there in the beautiful Vancouver. So we're helping to protect the trees. We also have what is called a QR scan. So for persons coming on campus, you are required to do a health questionnaire. So what we have is a QR code that you can use when you fill that out, you know, we just do the necessary checks. So instead of printing papers, you might go to some places and they use paper. So instead of using paper, you scan the code and it's done electronically. So that, you know, those are some little ways in which we, we help. I think Kevin is here. Yes. So do you want to share about your submission? Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Yes. Okay. And I just want to commend the entire team for organizing this event. I truly believe that this event actually helped to promote awareness, which is what we really need. And it helps to evoke change. So for me, and as you can see in that picture, it's all about waste management. So the proper disposal of waste products right, is a way to protect our environment and ensure sustainability and restore the world ecosystem. So sorting my garbage is not just a duty for me. Right? I really and truly enjoy such an experience right? because that's my way and also our way to really contribute to protect the environment. I mean, back in Jamaica, Right? When the garbage truck would come and collect the garbage, everything would, would be placed in one. Right? They're not sub separated. You have plastics, you have the organic, you have cardboard glass, and that's dangerous, both to the environment and also to the collectors. But coming to Canada and seeing the garbage being separated, all right, that push for recycling, I mean, I was truly pleased. So again, continue these event, events, continue, promote awareness. I really enjoy it and I really want us to change our mindset. Okay, over to you, Tracy. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Kevin. And you, you, you touched on the, the fact that, you know, in other countries, there might not be a system where the garbage is sorted, but through events like these where we create awareness, you know, we can inspire policymakers, government officials to formulate the necessary, well, to put in place the necessary measures to help with the sorting of garbage. And 
you can make that change. You can reach out to someone and then through that chain effect, as we spoke about, we will see a big change. So thank you for your submission. All right, thank you for your submission, Kevin. I believe those were all of the submission. Is there any final thoughts that anyone wants to share? Um, I just I just wanted to tell you whoever who created the event, I guess Pedro and Tracy, um, if you can send me the, the images so I can post it on uh, Instagram and Facebook from Axenda School Society. Yes, yes, we can. Thank you. And on that thank you note, I want to thank Team 3 from the Student Ambassador Program, which includes Bertha Kruti, Team 5 as well, which is led by Pedro, for their support. And I just love the spirit of collaboration. I thank those who submitted student services, our faculty members who are here, <laughs> the Accenda staff for making this possible. Continue, keep up the good work. And it was a pleasure to have you all. So our prize winners, as I said, you'll be contacted very soon. Very, very nice prizes in store for you. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Okay, Thank bye -bye. you so much. Okay. okay. You. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye, Nagur. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> bye, Pedro. Thank you. Uh, by the way, uh, do you have you, have you ever searched about Jamaicans in Canada? Yes, I have. Okay. Um, we have we have persons here. Mm -hmm. And the history of the Jamaica coming to to Canada. Do you guys have anything like? Because for my immigration project, I we gonna.